everybody welcome to my yard we're here in the month of july southern california zone 10a b something like that i think it changes constantly so i don't know exactly the zone but it's, it's either 10a or b anyways had some new additions to the yard i did a garden tour of this yard last year in july so this is a good time to do another update show you guys what's how the plants are looking one year later and so we'll show you some new plants like this one right here this right here is a seedling of the Pope ukulele also known as lemon meringue mango shout out to Chris and Har over at Truly Tropical Farms in Delray Beach Florida that's where I got the seed of this lemon meringue planted it it shot out one shoot a single stock even though it's a polyembryonic variety which gives me a strong belief that this is a unique seedling and the Pope ukulele lemon meringue has already already produced the lemon zest and the orange sherbet mango so the pedigree is really good those are two top 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 of the food chain level mango varieties over in Florida and I'm hoping to develop a variety here in California that can rival those a California native of, uh, of the lemon meringue and if you if, once the young leaves start to, start to come out you take it off you break one off and you rub it and you smell it you get the essence that citrusy delicious citrusy essence of the lemon meringue so i'm excited about this this was planted a few months ago actually i think it was planted in february january or february and it's grown out quite a bit here's some new leaves right here right behind it is jackfruit jackfruit from one of the best jackfruits i ever eat i ever ate i got it from the grocery store i planted the seeds this jackfruit tasted like bubble gum and i've read that a lot of jackfruits grow pretty close to true to seed so i'm excited I did some in-arch grafting down here, let me show you guys. Some in-arch grafting. So this was originally four seedlings. And these two were the stronger ones. And these two were the weaker ones. So basically I just grafted the weaker ones to the strong ones. And, you're, and I gave them, and that gives them two root systems supporting one plant. And that basically gives a super steroidy, multivitamin kind of boost to the tree. And basically, yeah, basically gives them two root systems supporting one plant and it's supposed to boost growth and these are growing really well they're almost my height i'm five foot eight and these are about to get taller than me i'm excited about that over here is a seedling of the sophie fry mango shout out to exotica exotica nursery over in vista california i know i don't know where they got a seedling of sophie fry because based on what i've read Sophie Fry is a, is a rare variety nowadays. Not, not many people have it, not many people plant it, not many people, it's not available in a lot of places, but somehow they got it. And the Sophie Fry is famous for producing the Kerry Mango. I think a lot of people know about the Kerry Mango. It's, it's my favorite mango. It has a unique flavor, it's delicious, it's outstanding. So I planted this seedling, hopefully you get it like a Kerry-like fruit in a few years, hopefully. So that's the Sophie Fry. Sorry for the shade. It's kind of a shady spot. I'm in, I'm behind. I'm in the back of the garage here in Southern California. I mean, if you guys know anything about Southern California, real estate is kind of scarce. So I'm planting trees wherever I can. So this is a little space in between the back of our garage and the neighbor's house over here. And uh, I'm gonna utilize any kind of space we have because you know we're kind of running out. And I love trees too much. I don't really have a lot of space though. This is a pomegranate seedling planted here last year. It was about half the height. It's doubled in height. There's a pomegranate up there. This variety came from Afghanistan. It's a, it's a cutting from Afghanistan or a seed from Afghanistan. And, and so it's an unknown variety. The fruit's really good. Really, really good. Sorry. Yeah, the fruit's really, really good. It has a nice balance of tartness and sweetness. And the, and the flesh is really deep, deep, ruby, dark, blood red uh, flesh. And it makes really good pomegranates. This was actually a cutting of a pomegranate over there. Well, in fact, let's just walk over there. I'll show you the pomegranate. But before that, here's some tomatoes. Second year plants from seeds of last year planted tomatoes. Uh, my mom planted all these. She took seeds from last year's tomatoes, planted them here. And we also have some, oh, here's some hot peppers here. Shout out to Toro Nursery over in uh, Torrance, California. That's where we got these pepper plants. Also where we got the tomatoes too. Shout out Toro Nursery. 
amazing, amazing nursery over in uh, Torrance, California. And they have an awesome product, like really different varieties of tomatoes. It's really cool. Let's walk over here. I'll show you the other big pomegranates. That pomegranate tree is probably the oldest tree in the whole, uh, in the whole house. I think it's about 16, 17 years old. Heavy producer, it makes a lot of pomegranates. Really delicious. Again, the seed came from Afghanistan, or the cutting came from, I forgot, it was one of the translator guys or a soldier brought it to us. And man, it's really good. I don't know the variety though, unfortunately. Uh, re yeah, really dark flesh, it's like blood red flesh. Excellent, like perfect balance of sweetness and tartness. And it's really good. And we cut this tree back every year, but it, it just, right now it's like 15, 16 feet, almost 20 feet tall, really. Over here is uh, peach seed. Someone tossed a seed and a little peach grew up. I don't know why it's fruiting so fast because this, this can't be more than a year old, two year old. Really strange, I don't know why it's fruiting. I don't even know if it's a peach. I don't know stone fruit too well. Anyways, this, uh, this is pretty cool. This is a uh, white sapote with a citrus graft on top. I grafted citrus to white sapote because they're both related. They're both part of the Rutacea family and they're distant relatives. So I want to see if they're graft compatible. So far, it seems like it's this citrus graft is taken. Strangely enough. Anyways, this is a white sapote seed. Again, with citrus grafted onto it. This is probably a, uh, I think it's a blood orange or a satsuma mandarin. Let me show you some, got some leaves popping through the tape. Yeah, this is Casimiroa edulis seed with citrus sinensis grafted on top of it. I'll put Latin names of all these plants uh, in the in the descriptions below so you guys know what it is. Let's walk over here. We got a improved improved Meyer lemon. It's another really old tree in the yard, probably like ten, at least ten years old. Heavy, heavy, heavy producer of lemons. I mean, look, you see lemons in different stages. Here's a ripe lemon. Here's a little immature lemon. And then here's some flowers. This thing is a monster. It just makes, pumps out lemons like an animal. Over here is a cherimoya tree. There's a video of me planting this tree on my channel. You guys can check it out. I planted it in 2019, early 2019, January 2019. And since then I did some grafts on it. Uh, here's a Pierce, Pierce cherimoya graft. Here's a graft from a wild tree near my house that produces incredible cherimoyas. I don't know the name of the variety, but it's a, uh, from, it's a wild tree in a dirt lot somewhere. Here's a variety called Big Sister. It's grown out. Shout out to Margaret, thank you for the sign wood. That's the Big Sister. Over here is the uh, Fino de Hete. Fino de Hete graft right there. And all this is Fino de Hete growth right there. Originally the tree was grafted to El Bumpo. It's an El Bumpo tree. I haven't gotten any fruit off this tree yet. It was flowered heavily. I haven't done that hand pollination thing. I gotta learn that to do some hand pollination, get some fruit on here and, and taste test some of these. But uh, yeah, shout out to Margaret. Thanks for the Fino de Hete wood as well. Over here we got a sour orange. Another seed came from Afghanistan. I don't know the variety or I don't know what it, um, what the name of the variety is, but it's a sour orange and it, Makes a good amount of fruit. Actually, I see one right here. I'll show you guys. Oh, there's some sour oranges. I tried some more white sapote grafts, the citrus, to see if they're graft compatible. Uh, I didn't get any good success though. There's a white sapote graft to the citrus. I don't think it took. And the sign wood for that white sapote came from this tree. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a Subel white sapote. Uh, monstrous grower. It's like 16 feet tall. We cut it back. We pruned this tree heavily and it still wants to grow like a monster. And it's this year, just like last year's production is ridiculous. Check it out. Look at all that fruit. Heavy, heavy, heavy fruit set. There's some more fruit in there. It's really everywhere. Look at that. And back there as well. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this. Cra <laughs> Crazy production. These are all the size of tennis balls. 
and this this tree has fruit on it 365 days of the year if you want a tree we don't get a frost here and if you want a tree that produces like a monster in a frost-free climate white sapote you're gonna get fruit all months of the year including the winter in fact it produces a lot of fruit in the winter multi-grafted avocado can't really see it too well in this sunlight but let me get in close to show you guys the results this is the Helen graft. I did a spray it, sprayed it with honey water to see if the production ups. This this flowered in the winter. I sprayed it with the honey water, and this is insane, insane production of Helen avocados. It, that honey water trick blew my mind. It it worked even better than I expected. There's fruit really everywhere. Let's get in close to show you. This is unreal, actually. Look at this. Crazy, crazy fruit set, man. Especially for a winter flowering. A variety that flowers in the winter. Ridiculous. This is the Little Cotto. The Little Sport Wurtz, aka Little Cotto Avocado Tree. The one that's eight years old and three feet tall. It's still really tiny. This little squirt. Grafted some different varieties to it. But this thing made fruit as well. Let's take a look. There's some fruit here somewhere. Oh, here's some. Here's a little, little cotto. Immature, it's gonna get really big. Little cotto refers to the size of the tree, not the fruit, because the fruit gets bigger than the size of a lot of the Hass avocados at the store. Here's another one, immature. Unknown mango. Man, I wish I knew the varieties here. Unknown mango. It's an Indian type, my friend gave it to me. He says it's really good. And it, if you do that leaf smell test, it does smell really promising. You crush up the leaves, it smells spicy. It has a spicy Indian kind of resinous smell to it. I haven't gotten any fruit off it yet. This is the second year in the ground. Jackfruits from two of my favorite jackfruits that I bought from the grocery store, planted them right next to each other. These are seeds and this is their second year in the ground. These were actually planted in 2018 and um, I haven't gotten any fruit or anything yet, but it's growing. It's growing. It's doing its thing. Here's a Hass avocado grafted to the little cotto thing. And again, yes, I did do that. I did do that honey, honey test, the honey spray. And look at this. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Look at all that. Ridiculous production, man. That honey water trick works. Crazy good production. Look at that. Insane. Oh, there are some different graphs on this. Uh, it's the multi grafted trees. Like uh, up there is Pinkerton, next to it is uh, Mexicola. Right behind is Nimlio. This is a Nabal, Nabal avocado. It's, it actually made fruit. Nabal is hard to get fruit. But uh, the honey water trick worked on that as well. Persimmon tree. Actually, you know, I think this persimmon tree is the oldest in the yard. This one has been here for at least 20 years. This is the Fuyu persimmon. Heavy, heavy producer every year. I did some graphs up there different varieties shout out to California rare fruit growers thanks for the scions oh guys if a lot of people ask me for scions a lot of get a lot of questions like where do I get scions I'm looking for scions I need scions California rare fruit growers man there's no better source you can get sounds of everything and anything that you can think of that you can grow in California you can get scions at the scion exchange that happens every January or February depending on where you live Reach out to your local chapter of the California Rare Fruit Growers and you, and you can get really good scions. If you don't live in California, I'm sorry. Um, you can probably try contacting someone that is a member of that California Rare Fruit Club. And if they're nice enough, they can send you scions. It's a Glen Mango. Glen Mango, third year in this spot. Got some mangoes on it. There we go, it's the Glen Mango. Multi-grafted citrus, got different varieties on here. Uh, we got Satsuma Mandarin, we got Moro Blood Orange, we got um, Newell's Clementine, we got 
Kino Mandarin, different kind of mandarins. I like mandarins more than anything else. So I just put mandarins on here. Cape gooseberry back there. Cape gooseberry, more tomatoes. Uh, lemon tree. Dancy mandarin tree. That's the dancy mandarin planted in 2013. I think it's like eight feet tall. Makes good fruit. Let's walk over here. All right, here in the front yard, okay, we got Pakistan mulberry planted in October 2017. And this has grown more aggressively than any other tree I've ever had in my life. It's like 20 feet tall now. And it's made, we got bowls and bowls and bowls of, of mulberries starting in April and going into July. The season was like three solid months. I don't see any fruit on the tree now, but man, it was, whew. These are delicious. I love, I love, I love, I love these mulberries. The Pakistan mulberry, and uh, I'm gonna have to prune it back because we're here in the median and the sidewalk. Yes, I plant trees in the median sidewalk. Yes, the tree obsession is real. I can't help myself. Over here is Suriname cherry and cherry of the Rio Grande. Eugenia uniflora, Eugenia involucrata. And right back there is another Suriname cherry, Virginia Uniflora. Shout out to Exotica Nursery, Vista, California for that one. Shout out to Laguna Hills Nursery in in Tustin, California or Anaheim, California for this these two plants. Guys, if you want some real deep gardening knowledge, knowledge about how to grow plants out here in California, subscribe to Laguna Hills Nursery channel. I'll, I'll put their description below. Shout out to Gary Matsuoka. That guy has gardening knowledge going back 40, 50 years. He's been growing plants here, especially fruit trees in this climate for the last 40 years. He's the man. I've learned so much watching his channel and you guys can check it out if you want. It's a reed avocado planted in 2014, 15, I think. Now it's like 10 feet tall. Insane production, heavy production, but since it's on the sidewalk, this has become a neighborhood tree, meaning people from the neighborhood help themselves to the fruit. I can't stop them. There's a crazy fruit set all over this tree. Satsuma mandarin planted the same day as this reed avocado, but it's kind of kind of remained a little dwarf, little guy. We get a good amount of fruit on it though. So this is like it's six year in the ground. It has a really thick trunk. It's pretty interesting to see. Thick trunk. <laughs> but the tree is kind of small. Over here, Vernon White Sapote. Uh, planted 2015, I think. So it's fifth year in the ground. Another beast of a producer. I mean, really insane production. Crazy good fruit set different stages here's some smaller fruit this fruit is about to be ready in a few days weeks there's more yeah I mean if you guys can grow this and you want a fruit tree that produces heavily white sapote is the way to go there's fruit all over the place oh there's some more The Vernon White Spote. I like this one more than the Subel. This one tastes better to me. Subel just tastes really sweet and it's just sweet and nothing else. But the uh, Vernon has like a little bit of com complexity of flavor. It has different like subtle notes to it. Over here is Multigrafted Mango. I've done a lot of video of this, videos of this tree on my channel. You guys can check them out. Uh, we have mangoes. Let's take a look at some of these mangoes. This is pretty exciting. I don't know the varieties though. <laughs> uh, taken from neighborhood trees, from my neighbor's trees. Shout out to my neighbors. This one looks good. I know up there there's Keat, the Keat mango. You can find it at the grocery store a lot. And, uh, but I've also since then grafted different, oh, look at this, whoa. Dang, a lot of production here. 
good production here, man. Looks good. We're in July and the mangoes are still kind of small. Small. We're a few months behind Florida and the rest of the world. We have a little different climate here. Anyways, this tree is like 10 feet tall, and I've grafted a few different varieties actually onto this tree. This right here is sweet tart. Shout out to Tropical Acres Farms out in West Palm Beach, Florida. Thank you for the scions. Uh, I'll scrap it right here. This is a uh, Neelum. And over here is Seacrest. And then a few others. Shout out to Tropical Acres Farms. Thank you for that. This is a little mango seedling project. Seeds of different mangoes. It's growing out. Barbados cherry, acerola. Second year in the ground, I believe. Facing the winds, we get heavy winds here. You gotta be a tough tree to survive in this lane because the winds are endless and ceaseless and they can be pretty harsh. But this Barbados cherry tree doesn't seem to bind. Here's some flowers. Nice flowers all over. We're gonna get some fruit. Good little flower set. Looking nice. And then this, the latest tree I planted, mango, Manila mango, came in a 15 gallon pot. I planted it a few months ago and it's shockingly really nice new leaves, leaf uh, growth, a lot of nice new leaf growth. I, I tipped this tree back heavily. I pruned it back. It was about twice this size. And I cut it way back and I, now we have nice low branching structure, which is what I really want. I want a complex low branching structure. And you achieve that by pruning like a, pruning the tree back like that. There it is. All right, folks, that's my yard. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear your comments. Oh, I forgot to talk about this. This is a reed avocado. Here's a reed. Reed is part of the multi-grafted avocado tree. Here's some fruit that I put in bags so animals don't eat it. But whoa, a lot of fruit. A lot of fruit on this reed graft. A lot of fruit. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. That's the reed. So yeah, that's my yard, folks. If you have any questions, again, I'd love to hear your comments. As always, like, subscribe, and let me know how your garden is doing as well. Thanks, bye.